All right. So here I have representatives of the phylum Nematoda. So these are the round worms. Um, more specifically, these are uh, Acarii lubricus, or the human round worm. So this infects both uh, pigs and humans, um, and is a pretty nasty parasite to have. So here I have uh, both a male and female. Let me zoom out a little bit. So as you can see, uh, they look nothing alike. Um, this is what we consider sexual dimorphism. So males will be much smaller, uh, and they'll have this hook, uh, or this spiral at the end. And inside of this spiral will be uh, a couple of structures called copulatory spicules. So you can't see it here, uh, and it's really difficult to see without a dissecting scope, but uh, within this uh, hook, there will be a series of barbs where this male uh, is going to clasp onto a female. So this is the posterior end of uh, this male, uh, and here is the anterior end. So the mouth uh, of this individual is going to be here, uh, and the anus will be uh, in this organism, or this individual, if I can get that spiral flat, will be right about here. Females are much, much larger. Um, so this is a female here, as you can see, uh, just in terms of width, uh, it's or length, it's probably three, four times uh, as large as that male is. Externally, uh, it doesn't have very many distinguishing features, so this isn't a segmented worm. Um, there's no rings like you saw in the uh, oligochete or the earthworm, um, and it's difficult to determine which side is which. So without uh, using a dissecting scope, we'll have to rely on uh, internal anatomy to determine which side's the mouth uh, and which side's the anus. So I'm going to start cutting this one open. Actually, I'm just going to use an old specimen. Eh, no, you guys deserve a good video. So I'm going to cut open this uh, nematode. As you can see, the cuticle is very thin, um, much thinner than what you saw in uh, the earthworm. In fact, this takes, I don't know what, a fraction of the time to cut open. I'll grab a couple T-pins. I'll start splaying open this organism. So I mentioned, try and keep reminding you guys when you're putting a T-pin, put it in at a very sharp angle so you have enough room to work uh, with your hands. So we put a T-pin in, put it all the way down on its side, and then insert the pin down like that. So I'm gonna work my way down the length of the body on either side, just spreading it open like this. So taking the teasing needle, working down, adding in another couple of T-pins, like this. Oops, actually tearing it too much. it all the way to the end. So I'm just going to splay it open here. Here. And then let's just put this here. Alright, so if we're just looking at this one end, uh, you can see that, well, this is the posterior end. So this is the digestive tract. This is uh, this flat ribbon-like structure. So this runs down the length of the body uh, from uh, the mouth, which is, would be on this side, uh, all the way to the anus, which is on this side. So the reason I can tell which side is which is the presence of these two structures. So each of these is a uterus, so these large tubes uh, that run down the length of the body that you're seeing, if I spread this open a little bit more, using another T-pin, each of these tubes, so there's one here, and it keeps tearing apart, and there's a second one right here. Each of these is a uterus, uh, and they connect to uh, uh, ovaries right here. So all this stuff that looks like ramen noodles uh, is an ovary, and so these are producing eggs, uh, and they connect to uh, 
the, uh, the uterus right here. So um, these ovaries are all the stuff, material that you see here that runs down the length of the body, connects to the uterus, and then runs uh, up the length of the body here. So let me see if I can uh, dissect out the uh, genital pore, which is Teasing needles, teasing needle, T pins. Ah, I passed it. All right. So this right here is the general pore. We center it a little bit bring the camera a little bit closer. So each of these structures, so here's one uh, and here's one. This is a uterus uh, and this is another uterus. They converge into uh, or they are branching off and converge right here which then extends to a pore on the other side of this tube here. So this is the general pore. All eggs are made in these ovaries that travel uh, down the length of the body uh, into the uterus and then back up the length of the body will uh, exit through this genital pore right here. This structure in the middle that looks like a ribbon, this is still that uh, intestinal tract and that runs down the length of the body from the mouth uh, on this side uh, to the anus on the other side. So remember the side with the genital pore closest to it is the uh, anterior side. The side with the genital pore farther, farthest away from it is the uh, pos posterior side, so the other, the anus. So, very, very simple organism. Um, if we look closely enough, uh, well, I probably should have zoomed out. Closely enough at this organism, uh, you might be able to see the excretory duct. So right here, um, there's a very thin line that runs down the length of this organism. And if I were to move all this uh, uh, ovary or kidney, uh, ovaries or uterus out of the way, you would be able to see that line running down the length of the body from end to end. And so that line is what we call an excretory duct. So this is removing all metabolic waste, uh, any excess salts, and any excess nutrients that this organism doesn't need. It also helps this organism osmoregulate. So any excess water inside this body um, can get passed out through this excretory duct. There's a lateral line system on the other side, which is a series of pores which this lateral, uh, this excretory duct connects to. Um, if I just tease open this cuticle all the way up to the mouth, we might be able to see uh, the pharynx. So the pharynx and the intestine look basically identical. There's not much that distinguishes uh, the two structures uh, in terms of appearance. But that pharynx is just going to act as a muscular organ that is going to be pumping food uh, into the rest of the intestine. So as you can see, if I can open this up a little bit. Now well, you can actually see it a little bit. Let me just roll my finger up. All right, so this here, uh, I'm covered up by, by my fingers. This is the pharynx right here. So this is this muscular organ uh, or part of the digestive system that is pumping food into the rest of the digestive tract. Um, so if you look just behind it, you can see a little bit of a difference between this pharynx here uh, and this uh, intestine here. So these guys don't have a very complex digestive system because these are par parasitic. They're absorbing all their nutrients from a host. Um, so uh, a complex digestive system is uh, not beneficial. It's basically putting organisms at a, at a disadvantage because they're uh, using a lot of energy to maintain a complex digestive system when they don't need one. So these parasitic organisms have a very simple digestive system. So that's female anatomy. Males are, as I like to say, much, much uh, more simpler than females, at least in terms of anatomy. So if I open up, oh, you can't see it. So if I open up this uh, nematode, at least try to, you can see uh, a lot 
Now you can't even see it. Dang it. There we go. Alright. So you can see a lot of ramen noodle looking material. So if I spread this guy open. There's not a lot of material room to work with with these guys. They are extremely small. keep tearing it instead of uh, putting a T-pin in. Dang, stop. All right, so I'm just going to show you this. All right, so all this material here, uh, this is all uh, what we consider uh, ductus deferens. So this is transporting sperm uh, from the testes, which originate at the end of these ductus deferens, which I will never be able to find unless I pull out uh, all this material here and try and find it. This small structure right here uh, is the intestine. So the intestine once again looks just like the male, uh, the females. So it's this extremely flat structure. Um, uh, looks like a ribbon that runs the length of the body. So the difference between males and females is that uh, the male genital pore uh, is inside this uh, this spiral here, right next to those copulatory hooks. So these ductus deferens, these will transport sperm uh, through this ramen noodle looking stuff, this ductus deferens, all the way down the length of the body uh, to this uh, uh, copulatory spicule where the genital pore is. Uh, that intestinal tract will also run down the length of the body, so it runs from the mouth, which is here, down the length of the body uh, to just posterior anterior to that genital pore here. So the anus is here, genital pore is just behind that. So males are much more simpler uh, in terms of anatomy. Um, basically it's a reproductive tract with a digestive system attached. So these guys are just passing on uh, their genetic material uh, in terms of fertilizing the female. Um, they don't really serve much else, uh, much other purposes, any other purposes. So that's a nematode dissection, a rough, very rough nematode dissection, but you do get the idea of uh, the simplicity of these parasitic organisms as well as the anatomy of a female. So remember the females have these two uteruses that converge at a single uh, point and then from there eggs flow out uh, of the body through that genital pore. They have an intestinal system, they have an excretory system uh, which has that excretory duct and that's about all that you can see. They do have a nervous system, but the nerves are much, much, much too small uh, for you all to see with your naked eye. So that is a Caryae lubricus or uh, the human roundworm in 15 minutes.